Welcome back to Morning After, everyone. It is 10.15 here on this Tuesday morning, and we're talking about the magic of music. Sometimes without even realizing it, when you listen to some of your favorite tracks, you may actually be helping your, your mind and your body heal in some ways. Perhaps if we're even more mindful of it, music can be more of a tool on the path to healing. Frank Fitzpatrick is a best-selling author. He's also a Grammy-nominated multi-platinum music producer and a wellness expert. Joining us from Santa Monica, California. Frank, it's good to see you, and I want to start with that. Where in your life, with music such an integral part of it, did you make the connection that music can also heal? Well, Ron, I did it pretty early in my life, in my, uh, you know, when I was around 12, you know, much like you did with, uh, you know, maybe you'll share the story with your mom, but it's, uh, I grew up in Detroit, and Detroit in the early 70s became a pretty rough city, and and I, it was a really confusing place for me, there's a lot, you know, schools were shut down, there's a lot of drugs in the streets, there was a lot of crime, and and as a 12 year old kid i had a hard time making sense of the world and 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 music kind of became my lifeline it was a big music city there was motown there's a lot of great rock and roll in those days and and um i just kind of lived inside the music it really helped me and i realized how much that it really did help me even then that it's something i really wanted to do in my life was to help people be able to use music in ways that could help them get through really stressful and difficult times and to thrive in the best of times was there a time when you felt like you were an outlier in believing these things, and since then science has sort of come up to meet it? Well, the science has been great since we've been doing more research on the brain and the fMRIs, and there's a lot of, you know, I have a large team of people and collaborators around the world that I work with on this, from neuroscientists to doctors to, you know, who are, but I think we're still a little behind the times in trying to get the collective to, you know, keep it in schools, bring it into hospitals more, and, and to really give people um, access to the power that music can have in their life mm -hmm. and in their healing process, and in, and in, and in, and you know, achieving their potential. Really, you know. Yeah, I was sharing with you during the break. Um, my mother and, and viewers know that she was a traumatic brain injury survivor. People who watch this so show regularly know that. And in 1986, when the injury happened, she didn't verbalize for five months, and we were told she, she probably wouldn't. She wouldn't talk again. But when she began to talk, the first word she spoke was actually singing along to Seven Spanish Angels by Ray Charles and Willie Nelson. And it was then that her neurologist, who was himself a bit more progressive, said music can have the ability to bring people around to verbalizing. And I thought... It was only years and years later with Alzheimer's patients and so forth that I heard more about that, but I experienced it firsthand in 1986. So to that end, are we seeing this now with brain injury patients and those who have other cognitive impairments? Well, we see similar things in terms of um, you know brain effects like it did with your mother, um, many areas of the brain and also the areas of the brain that have to do with speech and linguistics. Um, it also affects a lot of areas that have to do with memory, as we know, and um, so that's uh, for Alzheimer patients. There's been a lot of news around um, Tony Bennett, and, and um, you know, if anybody's seen the coverage on him, it's been pretty amazing. So, yes, we, you know, we've learned a lot about these areas, and, and we're learning more. Um, we really, you know, I my mission is that we really do bring it into the treatments and the therapies much more in a much more regular way. It's still really not supported as much as we would like. And during COVID, you know, people went through a lot of stress and anxiety like they do during the holidays. And and um, and music's a, a tremendous tool for that, you know, for help. Well, well, and I was going to, yeah, I saw the 60 Minutes piece with Tony Bennett and how music is really his lifeline. It's allowed him to, he taps into himself through his music when other parts of his his, right. his personhood right. is slipping away from this horrible disease. Let me ask you, when it comes to de-stressing with music, is it a personal thing, or is there some music that universally is better at helping us de-stress than other types of music? Well, the answer to that, Ron, is yes and yes, and it's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so, so uh, I don't know if that's the answer you wanted, but... but Music, I mean, in all the scientific studies that we do and all the research that we've done is, um, you know, musical preference um, has a huge piece to do with 
how you respond to different kinds of music. So, mm -hmm. you know, for one person, they might be able to relax to a, you know, to a hip hop track and another person might need, you know, new age and another person might need classical. There are some fundamental structures within music. For example, if you're using music, um, I recommend it for, you know, I call a musical bookend morning and evening. You know, if you're using it for evening to wind down, you want to try to have less of a of, of of a beat and you know less of a groove and and less you know and and kind of more relaxing music you know but it's not really a genre specific so so no 80s hair band uh, head banging stuff just before bed <laughs> we'll stay away right. from that not, yeah save, save save that for your you know for a replacement instead of your second cup of coffee you know yeah <laughs> and you also say that that music helps us get to know others and connect more deeply. I think music can be universal, like a universal language, a melody between two groups who don't speak the same language. They can sway to it in the same way. And also, you think about the power of music and how people tell their stories of strife. I think about the rap genre in particular, but it's not exclusive to that. That's important too, isn't it? Yeah, the story piece is really um, great because when we talk about using music, we always talk, think about listening or playing music. But, you know, I, I tell a story in my book about a 12-year-old a boy who goes to talk to his grandfather uh, who's failing and, you know, has not many days left to live. And, and But the conversation's been the same for about 10 years. You know, he says, Grandpa, how you doing? And Grandpa says, oh, not so good. And, and then the boy, you know, the grandpa says how you know how's football and the boy says oh i play basketball grandpa and you know you can kind of see where this is going right so it's in you know and so i have them you know people switch the questions you know and go and so now the boy daniel asked his grandfather what was the song you and grandma listened to when you got married mm. you know, what was your favorite music when you were my age mm. and suddenly the conver and and these memories of these times stick in our brain, you know, because they're deeply emotional memories. So the grandfather shifts to a whole different mode and the conversation becomes a conversation that those two would never have in their life about knowing how, how they fell in love and, you know, what was, you know, what music meant to them. So it, and I, we do this, at, I did this at the Thanksgiving dinner table. People can do this with their family because conversations can be either stressful, awkward, or sometimes plain boring. So you just, like you just start to ask what people listen to in those emotional development years between that they, you know of twelve and and twenty one that they now listen to through eighty. Yeah, and, it's and, it's uh, it's true. And and when people bring up politics, say no, no, no. Let's talk about music. Let's talk about music. Just one great right. example you can find in Frank's book. Thank you, Frank, so much. We appreciate it, and congratulations on the best selling book. It is called Amplified: Unleash Your Potential Through the Power of Music. You can check it out at Frank. Fitzpatrick.com. He's also on Twitter. And we will be right back here.